Hey everybody, I want you to go to heavensharvest.com, promo code Candace, and I want you to get prepped. We don't know what's coming, who knows, but regardless whether it's a hurricane, national disaster, or the whole government shuts down, they have awesome deals on freeze-dried food. In fact, they have a new item. It's freeze-dried cans. It's a lot less expensive than the big barrels. Go there, heavensharvest.com, promo code Candace, and check them out. Hey everybody, welcome to Jesus Goods and Babies. I'm your host, Dr. Candace Taylor. I have an awesome show for today. I'm going to start with Isaiah 66, 1. Thus says the Lord, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you will build me? And where is the place of my rest? Interesting. Heaven is my throne. And the earth is my footstool. It's like kind of like he's sitting and his foot is on the earth. Anyway, my husband loves that verse. That's why I shared it. So I have a show today. Y'all are going to be so impressed that I did this show. I did an interview again with this guy because I made the Rolling Stones twice. And then AJC multiple times. It went viral. You know, they've called me a flat earther. They've all this stuff. Um, didn't want me to get elected to the GOP because they said I was crazy. But I will interview whoever I want to. This is America. So welcome to David Wiles. Back to my show. Welcome, Dave. Thank you, Candace. And I want to say the earth is not flat. It is a topographical level plane with hills and valleys and mountains and trenches. But water tells us that the earth is level. And I would call you a biblical earther. Right. Because you follow the Bible. Right. I believe in the Bible, which is great because today we're going to, this is why you came back on, which you can come on my show anytime you want to. You're my friend. I love you. I told people I love Dave Wise. Well, he's a flat earther. I don't care. I love Dave Wise. He can come on my show anytime he wants to. But the reason why we did today is because there's a huge debate we're going to talk about that's coming up next week. The show will air and then the next week it'll be the debate. And so it's going to be all about biblical earth today. So y'all are going to love it. I don't care if you believe the earth's a globe, if you believe it's a level playing field, like Dave said, I don't, I don't care what you believe. You're going to love the show. Awesome. Yes. So Dean Odell hosts a, um, a Christian conference. I forget what it's called. And uh, Greg Locke, pastor Greg Locke from Tennessee, he spoke at the conference, they're friends. And uh, Pastor Locke has a massive church, uh, a mega church, global, global vision church, co- you know, coincidental. And uh, a lot of his um, congregation has been coming up to him, approaching him about flat earth. And he's like, nope, nope, nope. I go by the Bible. And he had a meltdown, a literal meltdown about a month ago. And uh, then he the next time he came on and he's like, you know what? I'm going to have Pastor Dean Odell. He's going to come in here and we're going to talk biblical earth. A biblical you know, about the Bible, and uh, if he can convince me otherwise, he goes, "I will, uh, I will change my ways. I will, I will be humble. I will, will be humbled." Since then, he's had two more meltdowns, screaming about about the about the Earth, and you can check that out on my channel, D I T R H. This stands for Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole on YouTube. I got some short videos there. Just look for Pastor Greg Locke, and um, he's got this big challenge. He's having it at his church, December second. Uh, open, uh, anybody can come, no charge, no tickets, just come. So we, we're, there's a lot of us going to be showing up there and we're going to be talking to people and it's going to be, um, I think this is going to be a turning point in uh, the political and um, religion, you know, Catholic or Christian, Christian view of what's going on with flood earth, because this is going to change everything. And this is happening December 2nd in uh, Tennessee. So I am very good friends with Greg Locke. I love Greg Locke. He's awesome. I went to the red carpet premiere of his movie, Come Out in Jesus' Name. He's been on my show. I've been to his church several times. And I love Dean Old. Dean and I have done interviews together. He ran for governor of Alabama. He's a dear friend of mine. And so I was like crazy. When I saw that they were doing this debate, I'm like, oh my gosh. And Greg and I have never had a conversation about really this debate and and create we've talked about creation but we've never had a conversation about you know globe versus flat and dean and i have because dean you know is a big big into that um flat and and 
you know, not being deceived and the whole thing. And he's written a book and he mailed me his book. But I just, I was amazed. I said, this is going to be awesome because we're going to get nuggets of truth because Greg does know the Bible and Dean yep. does know the Bible. And so it's going to be amazing. Yeah. So, you know, and, uh, and what I was impressed with, with uh, Pastor Greg is he said, you know, I'm going to come, I'm going to give you my information. I could do maybe in an hour. And he goes, and then you can have as much time as you want. He goes, I'm going to listen. We're going to have a discussion. It sounds like a very civil debate. This topic, as you know, because of our interview and you've ever seen debates, gets emotional, gets heated. I think that these two are going to be able to keep their calm. They're going to have the spirit of God discussing and the truth will be revealed. Hey, maybe Pastor Law, Pastor Greg, Greg will, uh, convince me otherwise. I don't think so, but I'm open to it. I am open to the truth. I don't want the earth to be flat. I don't want it to be round anything. And, and Candace just backing up, you know, the, the, the whole topic of flat earth uh, brought me to the creator. I was, and it's hard to say now that I look, I was, I'll say really stupid. I was an atheist, which is the really, it's, I don't know. I, I mean, I think really stupid is a kind thing to say about it. And, uh, and when I understood that we lived on a, you know, a intelligently designed world, um, I had no choice, but to understand that there's a creator and that my journey with the creator has, um, taken me on an amazing journey and I would uh, never do it without it. Well, you know what really with me, the reason why I love interviewing you and, you know, no matter what people believe or whatever, it doesn't matter to me. I love that you were like an astrologist, astronomy major. Like you were the top of your field there, right? And you totally but believed in all of it. I wasn't an astronomy major. I, I was in a business school. Okay. And, and, and we had this incredible um, um, science building with a huge uh, telescope on the top, a big observatory. And you weren't allowed to use it unless you took astronomy. So I took astronomy for four years because I love that thing. So okay, I did so it just as, as an elective. As but an elective. you loved it. That, that, so I you, loved it and I was business. really good at it. Really you good loved at it. it. And you were good at it. And so you're yeah. a really smart guy and you start asking a bunch of questions and you start digging and you're an atheist and you're thinking. And, and even tell them before we got on here, you were talking about that one verse in the Bible that like turns you off because it seems so crazy. What was the verse? It was Well, I was in a, a young life retreat as a young teenager and the, the, the first uh, Bible reading they were doing, um, the, I don't know the name of the verse, but it was about the stars falling to the earth. And me being scientific, I wasn't, you know, I didn't take astronomy back then, but I was, I was into all of that stuff. I was like, wait a minute, a star can't fall to the earth. A star, if it was the size of my house, a big house, the earth is a pebble. How could a star fall to the earth? It would eat the earth. And right there, I discounted the Bible as garbage until 2014. That was a long time ago, right? I'm, I'm older than I look. So it was a long time, but it scared me. Not scared me. It hid the Bible from me. And that's what the globe lie does. The globe is a fake world with the main purpose of hiding the creator. Well, you know what? So let's just pretend like there, you know, like if we are all believing in the solar system and, and the spinning and everything, if we all do believe that, let's just pretend if we do believe that and we read that scripture and you're an unbeliever, what if that one thing did keep you from believing in God? And how many people have been deceived and kept from that because they're caught up on whether it's flat or round or whatever? See, to me, and this is what I get, encounter a lot. Anytime we get this conversation brought up, some people are passionate about it being flat. They're passionate about it being a globe. But then there's other people, I think, like me and other people, which I believe in creation, 100%. I believe in a firmament. I believe in creation. I believe what the word says. But we are like, I don't really care either way. I believe in Jesus. Give me him. But you know, there's a lot of people who they want to know the scientific things. And they're not just going to say, I accept Jesus, no matter what it looks like. And I don't care about the rest. So you're going to have a whole group of people that don't get turned on to the Lord and they're going to burn in hell. <laughs> and I'm worried about those people who would read that about the star falling to earth and take it literal because they believe in, you know, a solar system and everything that, you know, is that theory. It's just, it, that bothers me. I don't want, I don't want anything 
that would hinder somebody from a relationship with Jesus. Nothing that we learn in school, nothing that's scientific, nothing should keep us and hinder us from the Father. Nothing. Revelations 1 7, which I'm showing right here, um, he will return and all people on earth will see him at the same time. How does that work on a ball? Doesn't work on a ball unless you're like, well, I could see him on TV. I don't think God planned on, you know, revealing uh, the return uh, on TV. On a flat earth, it makes sense. And, uh, you know, I believe that the that God is um, at the uh, Polaris on the throne above the center of the earth and with a view of the whole thing. That's just me. And you can see it all at one time. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, it seems so simple, Dave. It's almost like it's too simple. But, you know, why does everything have to be so complex? That's a great question. And this this world is is just an amazing world. Like, if we knew everything, it wouldn't we wouldn't have this human experience that we, we have. to. It has to be a challenge. Like, we're figuring it out, like you know that prayer bring you know guides you through life and 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 helps you deliver um the right things brings the right things to you you can't just pray, i want a million dollars that that's a bad prayer that's a horrible prayer right so that means your thoughts are creating your reality with god however you want to explain it so they don't want us to know that our thoughts create our reality they don't want us to know that we are in God's world. Nature is God's world. Nature can't be changed. It can be corrupted. They can change it and they can GMO it and they can do all this other stuff. And then they create this fake world, which is nature, the globe. And then when you're born, your parents sign a birth certificate. Oh, that's part of the globe world. And then you, you are a straw man where you know, you're, I'm a living man. I'm not David Weiss the certificate that's being traded on the stock market in the corporation of the United States of America. I'm, I'm, I live in God's world. So once you unplug from that system, they can't control you when you unplug from the, that system. That's why they're hiding this. That's why, you know, Candace, let's say you were interested in um, underwater basket weaving and you were looking on YouTube uh, a year ago and then six months ago and then two days ago. And you're looking at videos. And you're like, what was that video I watched? And you can go back to your YouTube history and type in underwater basket weaving. And there's a whole list of everything that you watched on underwater basket weaving. Beautiful. You can do it on Bigfoot. You can do it on COVID. You can do it on whatever you want. Everything will show up. If you watched a whole bunch of my videos or videos from Jaronism or Globusters or uh, Taboo Conspiracy, the real videos that YouTube won't serve you, they'll be right there in your history. But then a week later, a day later, whatever, you can go search your history for Flat Earth and none of them will show up. They all disappear and they're replaced with the propaganda videos. That alone right there should tell you something you know they're hiding it you know and why during the congressional hearings on how they're going to stop disinformation did they use flat earth as their answer why does neil degrasse tyson say he doesn't have enough he doesn't have time to deal with stupid flat earthers but he makes video after video after video straw manning us making claims that we don't make and claiming that we make them that's called a straw man so you got to look at this stuff and then you got to ask yourself god gave you senses your senses, what do they tell you right now? You look very still there. You don't look like you're tipping over at a thousand miles an hour. When you watch the sunset, God's sunset, you're seeing the sun just go away beautifully. Or are you tipping over backwards faster than the speed of sound with the whole ocean and everything? It's, it's the craziest stuff ever when you look at it. If globe believers knew a tenth of what flat earth researchers, investigators, know about the globe they'd be flat earthers they'd be all right the earth isn't the globe let me go to the bible let me look at science mix those together there is no question that we're on a level non-rotating plane so what do you think about us making rolling stones like why would me who is in georgia i'm in south georgia i supposedly got 3.4 percent of the vote i have an okay following on social media i mean i have a decent following you know i have several hundred thousand followers why would I be that important, Dave, for them to put me in the Rolling Stones, not once, but twice, oh. just from having you on my show? Because I said that it was globes everywhere, there's propaganda, but it's the truth. And you know how many people who don't believe in flat earth, they believe in they believe that we're, you know, in a solar system. 
they reach out to me. They're like, Candace, you know what? You're right. I have been looking in stores and there are globes everywhere. Like there are globe toys and there's globes in the decorations. And you said that on your show and people thought you were crazy, but it's true. Why are they pushing the globes? And I said, well, I think it's because of NASA and want to spend billions of dollars a month. But they try to say that I'm crazy because I said that. And they still go on my social media and my comments. And they say, are you seeing globes everywhere, Candace? Are you seeing globes? I'm like, yeah, I am. They, All you got to do is look that- for them. They took that way out of context and they focused on it. And then when something goes viral across all news stations and, you know, the the Young Turks and all of these other channels take it and make videos. Hmm. What's going on there? Why is that being pushed? Why? Why? You know why? And that was basically a straw man. They didn't they didn't even you, you need to listen to the whole show. Um, and of course, in all of those, uh, all of those, they don't say go back and watch the show and see for yourself. So I actually have a whole playlist of all of the hit pieces on you, and it was it's it's actually amazing. It's 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 kind of fun to kind of fun to watch. But the reason uh, that I would say I wouldn't worry about it is check this out. This is my app, which is comes what you can get on my website flatearthdave.com. These are the flat earthers on the east coast here. Oh right? my gosh, these- it so had grown so much. Yes. Yeah. It's growing incredibly. And this is less than 1% of the people that are flat earthers because not everyone has my app. Very few people have it in comparison to the number of people. And here's the thing. When you become a flat earther, you're not a flat earther on Tuesday and then a globe earther on Wednesday. When you're a flat earther on Tuesday, you die a flat earther because you never go back. Once you see the trick, you can't unsee it. So this is growing exponentially. This is what they're afraid of. And soon... Um, there's only people that are looking into flat earth and addressing it are going to get elected, get jobs, get, get the good, get the favors, because this is what's happening. It is amazing. It's not just here in the United States. Look at the UK. It it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. So again, I offer it. And this is, you know, people that are like, just refuse. Look, when I first heard about it, Candace, I refuse to look, I ban people for even suggesting that I, um, that, that I look into it. But I offer three Bitcoins. If anyone's following Bitcoin right now, that's like $110,000 for one glow proof. If we live on a physical ball, it should be pretty darn easy to find one proof. One proof and you win three Bitcoins. And let me just warn you something. If you try, you're going to end up being a level, horizontal, non-rotating earther. Wow. Yeah. So y'all try that. Really, I want somebody to do it. Do it. We need you to we need you to bid on that and get those bitcoins because Dave just keeps tossing that out there and nobody takes the bait. I don't understand it. it well, a couple of people have tried, but but when they try, they come up with really, really poor arguments. And then I'll I'll reply and I'll give them a say, here, please check this out. And then they come back, they're like, Oh wow, I didn't I didn't I didn't realize that's how the sun sets. I didn't realize uh that that you know mountaintops it you know 50 miles away look like they're at my eye level when they're thousands of feet over my eyes and i i didn't realize this and then they all they, they wake up it's people that wake up you know and people say what about pilots are they all in on it so many pilots are waking up i have at least 30 um major airline pilots in my address book that are communicating with me they're like yeah he goes when we're on a flight you know we take off and then it's on autopilot we've got seven hours to kill my co-pilot's going to be a flat earther before we land. So they're all waking them up. They're all stuck in the cabinets and they're, they're, they do what's called flat smacking, where basically they just, you know, asking questions and bring them in. And so I predict within one year, there will be no pilots that think the earth is a globe. I think it's because, you know, like to get somebody, you know, locked, where can you get somebody locked in a room where there's really nothing to do for multiple hours? Pilots. And when when you're a flat earther or, you know, a flat earth researcher, a biblical earth researcher, all you want to do is share the information with others. The highest purpose of life is to do is to gain maximum intellect, truth of our God's creation and share it with others. And that's what I'm doing. So I've been asking people that because you told me that. So I, when I, every time I fly, I'm like, do you think the earth's round or flat? Or do you think it's a globe or a flat? And you know, some of them will say um, a globe, and then, some will, and then and then some will say, "Why are you asking me that?" I'm like, "I'm just wondering." They're like, "What do you think?" I said, "Well, I think it's round. I don't know. I believe what the, the Bible says about a firmament." They were like, "Round, round." You like when you when you're standing, let's say you're in the middle of the the the, the salt flats in Bolivia, 
and you can only see so far in all directions. Let's say you could see 50 miles. Well, that would be a flat earth. Let's say you could see 50 miles in all directions, plot all those points. That's a big circle. You're right at the center of the circle. A circle is a line on a flat plane where all the points are equidistant from the center. We see in a circle. I think that the earth is a circle. If this is the whole world here, the shoreline is Antarctica. Antarctica could be bigger than our entire world, but this is where we live. And the yeah, evidence they tell, they tell me yesterday that they believe it's flat. Like after I, I ask, like, so I'm I'm getting right now like 50 50. It's crazy. Like half of them will say they believe it's a globe, and half will finally say, Yeah, it's not, it's flat. And because I'm like, well, why do because I ask the people that say it's a globe, I'm like, okay, so why do y'all use a flat map, a flat plane to right. do your to do your your route, right? Your the, flight plan. And they're like, the- I don't know. On the frequently asked questions section of the app, are all pilots in on it? Are pilots and scientists in on it? We uh, we have a three-hour video, 27 commercial pilots that are talking about how the Earth is flat. Airplanes fly straight and level over the Earth plane. They're not on a spinning ball. You know, there, there's so much evidence. It is, uh, it, it's, once you see it, you know, all flat earthers have the same thing in common. We're like, how did we ever believe in the ball before? And it's because you never thought about it. You were indoctrinated before you had the ability to, to critically think about the things that they're telling you. And so they, it's interesting, though, how many of them, because when we first I interviewed you like a long time ago, it was like I had one out of five. Now it's like 50-50. So there, I believe that about the pilots because I do, I ask, every time I fly, I ask them. Yeah, so so if we lived on a globe, this is how airplanes would have to fly. They'd have to n- n- go around. You know, the SR-71 Blackbird spy plane, it goes like 2,300 miles per hour. At that speed, you know, if we lived on a ball, they would fly off into space unless they nose down. They would have to nose down. Ready for this? 80 stories a second just to follow the curve of the Earth. So... How do you explain them not being slammed against the ceiling of the airplane when they're nosing down 80 stories a second off of a straight trajectory, right? Because when you're going fast, I don't care how fast you're going. If you're going straight, you might not feel it. You might not really feel it if you're on a really smooth, enclosed um, vehicle. But as soon as you turn, that's acceleration. You know, if you have what a about dinner the earth turning too, like you would be flying and turning. Yeah. Yeah, so I was just showing you the simple. If we go like this, now this is what they're doing. Look at it. It's kind of doing a figure eight. It's like like you have to believe this is going on. Well, people go, well, you know, the earth is, uh, the earth is, is uh, every, the air is moving with the earth, but a summer breeze can blow left and right. So when the plane is right here, this is uh, the equator, and the equator is moving just over 1,000 miles an hour. So when the plane's right here, it's moving sideways at 1,000 miles an hour. But when it's up here, this is a much smaller circle. When it's up like in northern Alaska, that's moving at like 200 miles per hour. So it went from 1,000 miles an hour to 200. When it crosses over the North Pole, it, uh, it is just pirouetting. It's not, it's not, it's not doing anything um, because it's just spinning around. And then it has to speed up in the opposite direction as it goes over. Not, and the reason your mind, most people are going, I can I, I'm not smart enough to figure it out. Yes, you are. But the reason you can't figure it out is because you can't figure it out because it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So here is, so think about this. This balloon up is that way and it's traveling a thousand miles per hour. This balloon up is that way. It's traveling a thousand miles per hour. This balloon up is that way and it's pirouetting because it's not moving at all. It's right over the South Pole. And this one up is that way and it's pirouetting. If I had another balloon here, it's going to have to go around on this weird tilted trajectory. And the reason that you're making that face right now is because this doesn't make any sense. That's right. That's what it is. And and that's how they got us because they got a guy in a white lab coat with a bow tie who lies and he's a failed comedian and he's the one that we have to believe. Whatever he says, but they never show any evidence of anything. They tell us the radius of the Earth is 3,900 and 3,963 3, miles, just under 4,000 miles. But we can see things that would require, so far away, they'd require the Earth to have a radius of 200,000 miles. It's like, 
so people are, get mad because I'm interviewing you, but I want to know the truth. Like, why wouldn't people want to know the truth? Because I'm very fascinated with this this theory. I'm fascinated with how it disproves what we've been taught our whole entire life. I'm just fascinated with it. Why would we not want to know the truth? Why do people want to be ignorant, Dave? Tell me that. I'm, I'm an, I have a PhD in counseling. I understand people's thought pattern and relationship and, you know, security and all those things. We want to be secure and safe and we want to know that we're protected. But why would you not want to know the truth? There's something innately inside of us that seeks well, truth. Right. And the, and they've done a great job programming us. We, we were programmed um, since, since, uh, since we were, before we could talk, you know, our parents got to probably put a mobile over our bed, uh, with, with, uh, with planets on it. Right. And then when we watch uh, Sesame street, right here, is, here is Sesame street and they have astronauts and all stuff, so, sorts of stuff, but check this out. This is a weird thing. in Sesame street. They're talking about what fiction is fiction. This is the fiction section library. What's up here. On the fiction section, right? Well, it's it's a globe because there's always globes, right? Because I always say that that's right. what I'm trouble for. There's a globe. There's globe. Oh, there you go. There's globes everywhere. They and they they want us to believe that you know modern education is creating people smart enough to repeat whatever they're told and follow orders. A good little worker slave. That's what the Rockefeller said. I don't want thinkers. I want workers. Right. right? And dumb enough to think that this makes them smarter than everyone else. The the so let's talk about the the curvature of the earth because nobody can take this. I guarantee nobody will make a hit piece on this section because this section proves that the earth is flat. And uh, God forbid that they can they can try to take that out. So here is um, you know the girl that's the famous comedian in Atlanta that they the Blair girl they think I'm her. Like these people are so stupid. They literally I, I think to, I'm she Blair. You did a good satire of you. I have to give it to her. But she <laughs> it was does funny. Not look like me. First of all, she's not she pretty as me. Did a good satire. She's not nearly as pretty as you. Thank you, and, Dave. But she did, you hear that, Blair? Because you're going to watch this. Satire. You're not as pretty as me. And you didn't have the red <laughs> lipstick right. You had orangey red, not purple red. It was wrong. Right. But for a stupid comedian, she did a great stupid bit. OK. And and a lot of stupid people watched it and made stupid comments. I read all the comments. And it's absolute. It's me. I'm like, really? Yeah. So, look, Candace, can you see my mouth? You can't see my mouth. Why? Because it's behind a physical Earth curve. So this is a physical horizon. Right. They go, well, the Earth is so big, you can't see the curve, but they want you to believe you can see a boat go over the horizon. So here is you know, large bodies of water at rest lie flat. This is a frozen lake. When a lake is at rest and not moving and super cold, it'll freeze and the ice is uh, provably flat. So here we set a camera up at six inches, less than a foot. At a foot, the horizon should be 1.2 miles away. So we're lower than that we, on, on a ball, the, the horizon, the physical horizon. You shouldn't be able to see the surface of that ball anymore, the surface of the ice beyond 1.2 miles. This is even lower than that, okay? So out here, they put... Um, four lights that are one foot off of the ice. And this is all documented. This one is eight miles, seven, six, and five miles, right? Now I rounded down. I said, okay, let's say it's a foot and let's say those were you know, higher. And, and so I went, I rounded, I gave the globe every benefit of the doubt. There's 30 feet of physical curve. So this light should be 30 feet below the curve. This one, 22, this one, 15, this one, nine. But somehow they all magically went right up to eye level and stopped. They're all right here. No curve, no ball. No curve, no ball. They're all here on the same line. That's impossible. Yeah, how would that happen? It happens because the earth is flat or the globe earth is trying its best to trick you. Yeah. <laughs> it's stupid. Can it trick us it, if it was spinning? Well, it, it, every sense you have says we're not spinning. Well, you're spinning at a current rate. But the thing is, if you were in a car going a thousand miles an hour, hundred miles an hour, it doesn't matter. You might not feel it. But if that car takes the slightest turn or the slightest speed up or slow down, you would feel it. Well, we're corkscrewing through space. You know, according to the heliocentric model, we're corkscrewing through space. We're spinning at a thousand miles an hour. We're we're chasing the 
sun, we're orbiting the sun at 66,600 miles an hour, another very demonic number. And when you look at all of the numbers in the helio nonsensical system, I call it, um, it's all sixes and 666. It's incredible. It's incredible. So they, and they, why, they, okay. So let's talk about that because that right there is enough to make me not believe it. Because if yeah. you're going to put sixes everywhere, I mean, come on now. I feel like they troll us. Like NASA, no, these people, yes. like if you want me to believe that and you've taught me this forever, don't use 666 because you're trolling me. Right. I 100%. Uh, let me get, I'll, I'll show you that in one second. Let me just finish this. So this is the sun's moving a half a million miles an hour, 66,000 miles an hour. We're speeding up and slowing down. We're spinning, you know, but somehow satellites, just or match all of those movements, you know, magically. All right. We're moving at all these, the, all of these um, uncomprehensible speeds. So this is the NASA's rocket sled. It goes by at Mach 8.6. Can't even see it. If you heard the sound, you'd, you'd actually jump out of your chair. So you can, you can Google it, a uh, uh, hypersonic sled track. And it goes by at Mach 8.6. Watch this. So you have to believe that we live on a rocky, lumpy rock surrounded by smooth, curved water that no one's ever measured uh, with air adjacent to a void of no pressure with that we call space and nothing equalizes. And we're traveling 10 times faster than that um, is just the spin of the, uh, the, the orbit of the Earth and 100 times faster than that. But when we go out into God's nature, what do we see? What do we see? Still. It's absolutely still and level and no curvature. Large bodies of water have no curvature. There is no curvature. There is no motion. We can see too far. That's all you need, right? And here on Earth, helium and hydrogen defy gravity. You could say that if, if, we, if, we're, if we're saying whatever gravity is, helium and hydrogen go up. They tell us that Jupiter is made from helium and hydrogen and it has more gravity than all of the other planets combined. And our sun is made of helium and hydrogen and it holds on to all of the planets with its gravity. And everywhere, every lab, nature, whatever, gas fills the available space to equalize. So open up the soda can, psh, instantly equalizes. Gas will fill the available space and equalize, except in space. Well, it will collapse upon itself and become these massive nuclear furnaces or fission furnaces. And you know what they say? The sun is using 4.2 million tons of fuel per second. So 4.2 million tons. And then it's converting that into helium, which is lighter than air. And somehow everything just works perfectly. You can't figure it out because you can't figure it out because it's unfigure outable because it's stupid. And, but we're all indoctrinated to believe it. And then if we ask questions, then yeah. we're crazy conspiracy theorists. Yeah. I, I say that the world, uh, large bodies of water need containment. This is our world. This is the shoreline of our world. Antarctica is the highest land on earth. It's averaged 200 feet higher than the ocean. Wait a minute. That's the container the edge of our pond, our world pond. What's out there? I don't know. We're not allowed to go. Maybe some people, some biblical people say, well, no, God says there's a firmament and that's it. And, you know, this, this is all earth. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's a much bigger dome and maybe there's other ponds out here. I don't know because we're not allowed to go beyond 60 degrees south. There's no independent um, exploration uh, out here. Now, there's some trolls out there. Well, oh, yes, there is. Nope. We've actually looked into it on my app. Go to the frequently asked questions. And go to the um, Antarctica section, and there's a bunch of videos that have done all the work for you. We've done the work for you. We've made it easy. Go look at it and then verify it yourself. But if you want to go to Antarctica, you can. There's 100 companies all owned by the same person, same commission, the Antarctic Commission. And they'll charge you, you know, ten to $50,000 for three days to go right to the tip of this peninsula. And there's two islands there. They take you your choice, Rothschild Island or Deception Island. Shut the front door. <laughs> yes. And they'll Are show you, you some ice. I am serious. They'll show you some ice. They'll show you some penguins, but you'll never get close to the shoreline. Now, yes, there are. Um, there Deception are. Deception Island and Rothschild Island. Yes. Yes. 
Come on now. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. And, you know, and people have think, oh, where's Dave? the attorney? Have you been? I want you to go. No, but we're, we're actually planning a trip. Uh, we're, we're, we're planning a trip next year. One, um, there is a woman. Who, she's um, I think she's a lawyer. And uh, she was watching my stuff. And she just she's like, wow, this is amazing. I got to go to Antarctica. And she went last year. She went with her. She was going to go with her daughter. But she ended she went, ended up going with someone else. And she said, there is no ability, there's no freedom to go explore. You are on this trip. You're shown what you're shown and you're thrown out of there. You're not going anywhere, right? This is not flat earth. This is the edge of our earth. This is the shoreline. What's out there? We don't know. So what we don't she know. Say, did I she say what land. they told her? Like, did they say, did, did she ask them, are you a robot? Do you, are you put on a script of what to tell us? Can we ask questions? Like, where else have you been in Antarctica? Like, did she ask them anything? I, um, she asked a bunch of questions, but really there was no, nothing useful came out of the trip. There's nothing useful. I have idea. I have an idea for an experiment that is going to actually 100% prove that the earth is flat, but, and it's not going to cost that much. And we can do it in one day. Um, this is all of the, supposedly interior mountains, but I say they're the exterior mountains and they're all called dome A, dome B, dome C. Why are they called dome? And, you know, you can make up excuses. Well, dome means the top of a mountain and, you know, what, whatever, you know, these are the Antarctic bases. This is where they are. They're just on the shoreline of Antarctica. Nobody goes from this base to that base. Should, just a short trip across the bottom. Nobody ever does it. Nobody circumnavigates south if this is the north south is every direction away from north because if you have a magnet your compass is going to point to that magnet no matter where you go if you're walking away from the magnet you're walking south east and west are circles and that's what a lot of people can't get their mind around you know they're like uh what about uh you know uh amelia Earhart? well she went west 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 this is this is west all the way around all around, unless you went east. East is a circle around the center magnetic north. South is every direction away. Well, Dave, show them how you've shown me before about the earth and the, I mean, the sun and the moon. Like, we're not actually rotating around them. Is The theory is that it's, they're kind of rotating around us, right? Well, it's not a theory. It's an observable reality. So here is the, the, the sky is a perfect clock, right? And so we're supposedly, you know, all of these planets and gravity and everything, try to like set up a whole bunch of magnets or something near each other. They'll all jumble, they'll, they'll, they'll pull on each other. But for some reason, the sky is a perfect clock. We're, they tell us there's 100 billion stars in our galaxy, 100 billion, and 80% of them are binary, which means that they're going around each other while they're spinning around the galaxy. But never in history has any two stars looked like they crossed because of parallax, right? We go... From one in June, we're 93 million miles on this side of the sun. And then we go in December, 186 million miles on the other side of the sun. And we're traveling 4.4 billion miles a year chasing the sun, but we never see any parallax. Parallax is when things change position due to your position. Never any parallax. Every star is in the exact same place. Go out and take a picture of the sky tonight. Put a note in your calendar to take the same picture next year, same place, same time. Every star will be in the exact same position. So the way it works is the sun is the hour hand. Wherever it is, it's noon. If I called my friend PK right there in Sydney, bam, it's noon. I'd say, where's the sun? He'd go right above me, and it's noon. And if I waited until it got over here and I called somebody in Johannesburg, I'm like, where's the sun? They're like, it's above me. What time is it? Noon. So there's your 24 time zones. If I speed it up, you'll see that the moon is behind it. And the sun will lap the moon every 28, 29 days. So the moon keeps track of the weeks and the moons. It used to be 13 moons of 28 days. Right? And then the stars lap the sun once a year. So 365 times around. That means the star, the sun will drift back into each zodiac for about a month. So the stars keep track of the seasons and the years. This is God's clock. It's more accurate than the finest Swiss watch ever anywhere because all watches, all timepieces are based on the sky clock. Okay, so explain this to me. I think maybe I asked you this before, but I can't remember. 
the Georgia Guidestones that were in Georgia that I said needed to be taken down because of their yeah. satanic. But anyway, and, and they were struck with lightning like a year ago. There was a North Star, like in between the Guidestones, there was a North Star all the time. Like you could see it all the time there. And so it was weird to me, like how, if we're spinning, can I see the North Star there all the time? So then this is something we've, a uh, bunch of us, uh, have, I didn't personally, go but I have good friends that went and took pictures and videos and and everything so we're corkscrewing through space like this Shh, crazy 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 and we're moving 186 186 million miles back and forth but somehow our north polar axis points towards polaris and when you look through this little thin hole right here you see polaris you see a perfect you see polaris right in the center of that hole now the answer, the helio nonsensical models answer to that is it's so far away that even though we're moving four and a half billion miles a year, it'll ne it won't change because it's so insignificant. So again, you can't wrap your mind around that because it doesn't make any sense because nothing could be that far away and you wouldn't be able to see it if it was that far away. So, okay, we'll give it to them though. The problem is they tell us there's a, um, there's a shaft in the Egyptian uh, Great Pyramid of Giza that points towards Polaris. And you know what their excuse is there? Well, it used to point towards a different North Star, Thuban, 2,000 years ago. And we just happen to live in the time where it's pointing towards our newer North Star. And in another couple thousand years, we'll have a different North Star because the Earth is wobbling one degree every 76 years. That doesn't sound like a lot, but think about this, Candace. One degree is three moon widths. That's one degree. The Georgia Guidestones were built in 1981. They were up for over 40 years. That means the Earth would have wobbled over a half a degree. A half a degree would have knocked Polaris far out of that hole. But when we noticed it was still there and we started making videos and they started going viral on TikTok and YouTube and everywhere else, all of a sudden, bam, a terrorist. They said lightning. Then they said a missile. Then they said a terrorist. But guess what? We'll never know because three hours they later, said, the bulldozer. They said were me there. that it was my fault because I said that they needed to come down. It was my fault, right? Well, and, and you're just you were looking at it because of the messages on there. You know, keep humanity under five hundred million, and that's a whole other thing. But the, I, I believe the reason they took them down is because this was undeniable proof that the Earth isn't wobbling. If the Earth isn't wobbling, everything's out the window. So, you know, Everything's it, this is a good point. The Lord just brought this to my mind. So if they want to call me a flat earther and make fun of me, I'm the one that said the Guidestones were evil and they needed to go down. And so they were struck with lightning because the Lord told me that they were satanic. And I visited them twice and did a video and said, I, when I'm governor. I'm going to do an order that we're going to defund that county until they get rid of them because they have all this satanic stuff. Why would I do that and say that if I'm a flat earther because this proves flat earth? But see, that's what I'm it saying. They, nothing makes sense. They, everything is like just randomness, just pulling it from everywhere and trying to disprove this and disprove this and disprove this and make everybody out to be crazy. That's crazy. That right there, that whole agenda they've done is crazy. Yeah. And, and again, the people that defend the globe and make fun of true earthers, level earthers, flat earthers, whatever you want to call us, um, they're the ones that don't do any research. They don't do anything. They just look for jokes, look for things out of context. They straw man us and they never address the fact that we can see too far, that you can't have high pressure next to no pressure without a physical container. Hey, let's have a barbecue, Kansas. Can you go get um, some propane? But I hate containers. Bring it back with no container. Can you do that? No. Why? Gas violently fills the available space. If I had a vacuum box, a box where I sucked all the air out of it, a big glass box, there's no air in it. So it's no pressure, kind of like space. And I had a little valve and I opened it up on the bottom. Violently, the air is going to rush into it to equalize. And that's down here where the gravity's stronger. But for some reason, the vacuum of space can't pull, can't let the air fill it. Somehow gravity's holding onto the air. And what's heavier? Air or moist cloud water filled air the air would the regular dry air would be lighter right so if gravity's holding the air down how do multi-million ton clouds float in the sky 
It has to do with electrostatics. We don't have enough time to talk about that. But on my app, if you go to um, the homeschool section and there's a part called Schooling Globers, there's a whole thing, the whole section on, on that. Also on the frequently asked question page, gravity section, lots of nice short videos there. Um, we make it easy. You don't need a degree. A degree means you were very good at memorizing and regurgitating and not questioning. That's what a degree means. And if you have a master's degree, you're done. You're finished. You're never going to figure out this world. I have because four you're degrees. So done. I have a so terminal. Well, oops. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, well, well, here's the thing, Candace. You're a true believer in God and Jesus and the Bible, and you're looking for the truth and God is guiding you. But most people that have degrees, a lot of people that have degrees, <laughs> they're disconnected from God. That, that would be an interesting uh, statistic to see people with degrees, how many of them wake up uh, and, and how many of them are, uh, you know, have a relationship with the creator. True. Be interesting. That's, that's good, we should do a research study on that. I yeah. want to ask you a question. Yes. I had something, and you may not have ever thought about this, or maybe you have an answer. But I was this week. I was reading something, and then I was listening to someone, and they were talking about how before Noah and before the flood, we the earth was watered from the ground, like with a mist from the ground. There was never like had never been rain before, and so that was one reason why everybody thought Noah was crazy. He built this big boat. And for a rain, they didn't know what rain was. It had never rained. It always just misted. And then it rained. And then once it rained, it always rains. Now, it will never be flooded again. That was God's promise. That's why we have a rainbow, not because of homosexuality, but because God's promise will never flood the earth again. So if God, like once he did that, then that rain cycles there and we always have rain. And I don't know. I was just thinking about that. I had that epiphany this week of, once a miracle happens, it can be ha it can happen again. But that's what's interesting. That to a flat Earth, I don't know. I had I hadn't heard about that. Um, but one thing interesting: God's rainbow has seven colors, which is the God number, and the other rainbow that was hijacked has six. Whose mm -hmm. number is six? Six! Oh my gosh! Yes, whose number is six? So the seven striped rainbow is what I'm talking about. Yeah, and uh, and. Looking at the numbers, National Aeronautics and Space Administration, add them all up, 666. Uh, a couple more. You know, no, if you added them all up, it equals 666. You can, you can do it. Um, and that's if you assign the letter A is 1 and Z is 26. Um, 6 times 6 times 600 is the circumference of the Earth. Point, the Earth is curvature is 0.666 inches um, per mile squared. Or per mile, that's the you know the per mile. Uh, sixty six point six miles per hour is the speed that we orbit. Six times six times sixty is the diameter of the moon. And then there are I can't read them all, but there are a ton of these. How many do you need to understand that there's something demonic behind the helio nonsensical soul lure? system they're luring you away from god's creation and putting you on a fake globe in their fake commerce system where you have to pay for everything we're the only ones that have been tricked into paying to live you know people say what difference does it make i still have to go to work on monday well what if you didn't have to pay for what if the free energy that they we know that they're hiding we can prove that they're hiding um what if you didn't have to pay for gas for your car, air conditioning, or heat for your home? Do you think that would free you up a little bit? Do you think that would give you, you know, and then you could have as much power as you need to do other productive things. How much more productive would you be? How much better would this world be? But they're, they're, they've got us in this, you know, fake power system. It, everything is fake. All of our history is fake. On the app and the, on the more resources page, there's a section called Tataria and the Mud Floods, mind blowing stuff. In the homeschool section, there's a couple of guys in there that will show you videos and, and go through these old buildings, will blow your mind because you never thought about it. Just because you don't know something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means you're ignorant because you don't know it. I'm ignorant to everything that I don't know. And there's things out there that I'm completely ignorant to because I don't even know they exist. So, ignorant is a bad word, it's the description of not knowing something. Flat Earth researchers, we're conspiracy analysts. We're looking at the evidence and there's zero evidence of the globe. 
That's why I still have my three Bitcoins. True. So y'all remember, you can bring him evidence and get the Bitcoins. Is that like over $100,000? Over hundred. And what I say is, so you don't waste my time. Get my app. Every day there's a featured video right here that YouTube is hiding from you. Watch that every day for two weeks. At the end of that two weeks, you'll be a flat earther. But just if you think that you won't, you'll, you can send a proof to me. But before you do, you have to hit the frequently asked questions button and up will come. Oh, there's my question. My thing about gravity's in there or the sunsets in there or seasons it's there. Then you'll watch it and you go, huh, maybe there's another one. And then you'll try that a couple more times and then you'll hold your head and then you'll tell your wife or your husband and then they'll tell you that you're crazy. And then you'll email me going, you've ruined my life. You know, I can't even talk to anybody anymore. And then, and then, then you'll say, everyone's making videos about me. I'm in Rolling Stone magazine twice. And, you know, but, and here you are talking to me again, because you are a brave, smart woman that is looking for the truth. Or glutton for punishment. That's what my, my coworker said. You're glutton for punishment. I'm like, well, you know, just keep growing my platform and they just keep growing it. I'm like obsession with me. Why are you obsessed with Jesus guns and babies are obsessed with the guy's stones are obsessed with flat earth. It's like everything I say, they get obsessed with it. Well, if a million people have the wrong idea and you're like, wait, well, wait a minute. I, I have a different idea. Stand in your truth. That's what, isn't there a Bible about that? Stand in yeah. your truth, stand in your truth. Because if you stand in your truth, though, this realm, this world, this God created amazing place will deliver all of your dreams. What are you helping? I have a question. Are you helping to coach David? Oh, they, they know. No, no, yeah. Um, yes, yes and no. He, he, uh, he invited me down as soon as it happened. And I was like, I wasn't even going to come. I was like, you know what, Dean, I, you need my graphics. I can give you all the things. And I gave him some stuff, but um, I got Austin Witsit. So um, Pastor Locke says he's just going to stick to the Bible. I don't believe that. I believe Pastor Locke is going to bring in some physicists and stuff that believe that truly believes the earth is the globe. And that was why we have Austin Witsit. He is a very strong Christian um, who knows the physics. Like when he says, Aristotle said this, Austin will show you exactly what Aristotle said and what it means. So Austin's going to be there to back him up. Dean can hold this by himself, but we've got him. We've got him backed up. God's got him backed up. It's going to be an amazing, amazing debate. I wish you could be there. It's going to be epic, right? Well, you never epic. know. Maybe I'll re I'll move my meeting and come or something. I don't know. It's just, it's going to be epic. I, and you know, We'll probably, this will air, and then in the week before the debate, they'll pull viral clips out. And I don't know what I said today. What did I say today? What's your prediction that I you're, said you're, won't go viral? They're going to they're gonna try to find something, and they'll, they'll, I can edit it. I can edit. Give me one sentence. I could change it around and make you sound crazy. So yeah. the, here's the thing. You, you stand in your truth and the truth will set you free. You know, all things are being revealed now. This is this is the apocalypse because that's the unlifting of the veil. Everyone is starting to see what's going on. And it's 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 going to happen overnight. It's going to happen overnight. One tweet. You know, Stu is tweeting every week. He's throwing out some meme about questioning the globe and he's firing people up. He knows Peggy Hall knows. You know, um, most of the people in the health freedom movement are all flat earthers. Some of them are still in the closet. All right. You know who you are. Come out. It's time, it's come, time to come out. And um, it, it's it's coming. There's some very big podcasters that have reached out to me. They're like, listen, we we uh, we we know the earth is flat, but we're afraid to talk about it. And I'm trying to trying to get people to the point where, you know, when this tips, it's going to tip. It's going to happen all the time. And Kansas, they're going to look back and go, oh, you know that Kansas Taylor, she was uh she led the way. She she she, she got was interviewing that guy and she said yeah. there was globes everywhere and she yeah. said that. I, I, doesn't that make you, you know, a little bit like Jesus where you're persecuted for the truth? You know, I think I'm a truth seeker. I really am. Like I want to know the truth. Whatever the truth is, I want to know what it is, and I want to be grounded in the word. And I don't want to be, you know, just believing what everybody says. That's why I know, you know, the election. I know there was election fraud. I, I know the numbers don't add up and it doesn't make sense. And God gave us beautiful brains for us to use and not just be robots and not just regurgitate information. We're supposed to be free thinkers. And so I'm a free thinker and I like to ask questions and I like to think about things for myself. And honestly, I don't want people to judge. 
I feel like we can believe whatever we want to believe. And so when somebody comes at me and tells me not to have somebody on my show or not to ask questions about a topic, that makes me want to do it more. I understand. Um, on the app, and I saw anyone that's going to the debate, if you go on the app and you go to the messages section, so if I click the messages, um, it'll bring me it'll bring me to the messages. And then I have a group called Dean Odell, Greg Locke, if you can see it. And you go there and these are people, most of them that are going to the debate. There's 55 people in there already. We're going to have a huge meetup. It's going to be amazing. And uh, you can message people. It's kind of just like Telegram. And um, that's how we're going to coordinate it that day, the day, the day before. And it's going to be super fun. I've got these biblical flyers, amazing, with top 10 uh, biblical flat earth proofs in them. And we're going to give them to everybody to kind of hand out to everyone as they're going in. So people have something to look at, something to go. You can find information about this debate at deanodal.org. Just click on the debate and all the information is there. You want to know where it is, the address, the time, and frequently asked questions. He, he, he set the whole thing up. So don't email me saying, what time is it? Is it Eastern? You know, just go to deanodal.org. Um, and you can find it on my YouTube channel. But everything you can find from me is at flatearthdave.com. Flatearthdave.com. Well, one, 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 one prediction. What will yes. happen if Pastor Greg gets totally awoken up and he totally believes it. Do you He's think he'll change the name of his church? Interesting. Maybe. I don't know. That's a great question. So here's the thing. This Global man vision. is going to be humbled, which is an amazing thing. It would be the best thing that ever happened. And this will be his awakening because, you know, I believe he's a man of God. He he's is. preaching. Absolutely. And he, he's preaching from his style, what he does. And he's his goal is to bring people to God. When he finds out that he's missing the, the full creation. Yeah. There could be a God on a globe flying through an infinite universe. But as Matt Long says, um, if you want to dilute something like God, what do you do? You pour it into a bigger container like infinite space. And that's what this infinite space does. It dilutes God. When God created us right here, this is the center of creation where we are all part of this creation. And we're, it, it, there is no, you know, we're all together. I'm just saying it, we're, all, we're all one if we allow it. That's, a, that's another thing. They don't want us getting together. They want us six feet apart. They want the population low. They want us, uh, you know, not collaborating they want us scared broke and sick that's scary that's, what that's the truth yeah so and we're not uh, gonna be scared broke and sick we're gonna be abundantly everything because we love jesus kansas i i love what you're doing and this is you're on Stu peters this goes on Stu peters network Stu peters it, it, there's a lot of people that think he's you know he's got ulterior motives but Stu peters is waking up so many people it's amazing I and he say. has he has the gonads. Am I allowed to say that to you know put out his uh, you know put out truth? He doesn't care what it is. I say the most amazing thing on the internet is Stu Peter's Twitter. Okay, <laughs> that's it's the most amazing thing on the internet. Like I go there every day and I'm blown away by the tweets that he does. He's so good. He, is he doing that himself, or does he have like a team of people? Oh, it's on all that? him, honey. I'll be like, why? Don't say that. But it's tasting him. Are you crazy? You're a nut. He doesn't care. He's standing in his truth. And if everyone did that, this world would be amazing. Amazing. I'm standing in my truth. Listen, I, I had the American dream. I worked. I went to college. I went to work in corporate America. I left corporate America, started my own company. It turned out it was a growing, super successful company. And I walked away from it all, which is the craziest thing. Thank God my father had passed away already. Because he would be like, are you out of your mind? You know, because I did everything I'm supposed to do. And um, I walked away from it all to talk to people about flat earth and God. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I, and here's the thing. I've never worked more in my life, but I love what I do. Right. So, passion, so uh, passion. yeah, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. I do what I love seven days a week. I, I would be doing this on my spare time after work. But this is my work. I do this all day. You're my third interview today. And I have one more, um, one more coming up in an hour or two after this. So, so you love it. it. it 
I love it. And, and, and I love it because I'm waking people up. I love it because when people wake up to flat earth, they, as I said before, they don't leave. They find God, they find creation, they find their true purpose, they find their real location, they plant their feet on the ground, they take their power back. What is better than that? That's right. <laughs> so listen, y'all come to the debate. It's going to be awesome. December 2nd, it's in Nashville. It's in Mount Juliet, actually, at Pastor Ray Walk's tent, under the tent. And all the information, flatearthdave.com, get the app, look at it. Listen, whether you believe or not, you need to know facts and look at it and examine it. You don't just take what people teach you and don't ask questions. Like We have to ask questions. We can't trust anything. You have to ask questions. Hey, young Turks, all you people that are watching this and looking for something to take, here's something to take. Take Dave's three Bitcoins, right? Earth is a yeah. globe. Give me a proof. Take my Bitcoins. Bring it. And you can't because the Earth isn't a globe. And until you face it, you are not standing in your truth. You're standing in in anti God position. So they're just young you Turk. They're just little turkeys. Just let them be yes. turkeys. It's very appropriate <laughs> for Thanksgiving. Nice. They'll, they'll probably they'll they'll get me on that. That's okay. But anyway, of course. Dave, thank you so much for coming. You're welcome anytime, no matter what anybody says. You're always welcome right, I'll here. See, I'll see you tomorrow, same time. That's right. That's right. So thank y'all so much for coming. I love you. God bless you. God bless America. Hey, everybody. I want you to go to heavensharvest.com, promo code Candace, and I want you to get prepped. We don't know what's coming. Who knows? But regardless, whether it's a hurricane, national disaster, or the whole government shuts down, they have awesome deals on freeze-dried food. In fact, they have a new item. It's freeze-dried cans. It's a lot less expensive than the big barrels. Go there, heavensharvest.com, promo code Candace, and check them out.